Now, we've had a brilliant question this week, and I'll, I'll read it out for you, and I'll put it on the screen as a slide. David, I have a question. I do have very difficult anxiety, mostly in the morning. Those ruminating thoughts and worries start the minute I wake, sometimes so very early. But when exposed to a professional work situation or job interview, I come across brilliantly and always ace it. I thought it was a habit, i.e. I'm good at my job and my brain kicks into autopilot, despite the anxiety I feel on arrival beforehand. But yesterday, I did a psychometric ass assessment test, ran no questions, pre-interview, and apparently out of 20 applicants, I came top. So how did I do that? The test result cannot be habit. The test showed me, the real me. I didn't show anxiety, the introversion I feel. So why the anxiety? Thank you in advance. So what this member described is profoundly interesting. It's a brilliant question. And it's interesting that she saw the difference between a sort of business as usual and a slightly different experience. The answer is this. We are not uh, unified individuals, but we actually have within us a number of sub-personalities. Now, you wouldn't normally recognize that because whenever a sub-personality kicks in, it always thinks that it's the only personality that there is. But let's, let's just explore this a little bit further. It's generally thought that we have between four and nine sub-personalities. Now, obviously, some people have more, some people have less. But what's a sub-personality? Well, a sub-personality is basically a neural network of beliefs, uh, memories and experiences that coalesce around a particular kind of theme. So imagine this, right? Um, you know somebody who is single and then when they go into a relationship, a romantic relationship, let's say, they're very different. They're either really controlling or they're very passive. They're very bossy or they're very angry or they're very um, uh, not themselves somehow. Or, do you know people, in fact, you may have done this yourself, you go back to visit your parents and you sort of go back into being a child again. You know, you might be whatever age you are and, you, and your parents might be whatever age they are, but you, there's a bit of you that goes back into being a child and responding to them as a child. What about at work, right? At home, you might be one way. At work, you might be a very different way. And people might say, well, you're very different at work or you're very different at home. Or I didn't see that side of you. Or that's an unusual kind of uh, personality that you put forward. So if we think of between four and nine sub-personalities, well, we have a number of different kinds of experiences. If you're a parent, that is likely to be a sub-personality because it's enduring, it's long-standing, and it has lots of beliefs, memories, and experiences that, that kind of feed into it. So what this member of the Panic Pit Stop support group described was she had a sort of the, the distinct feeling of a sub-personality kicking in, but not knowing it was a sub-personality. And the sub-personality that kicked in is I'm good at my job, I'm very competent, I'm very professional, I can do this. But the sub-personality that was in place before was I wonder how it will go, I'm anxious, I don't understand. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm a bit uncertain about it. I can't predict it. I don't necessarily feel like I've got in control. So she switched from the anxious subpersonality to a highly competent professional subpersonality. And it was that switch, the rapidity of that switch and the outcome that really got, made her go, oh, that's unusual. What happened there? How can that be? How can I be like really competent? Best out of 20 people on a, on a kind of um, a pre-interview and, and a questionnaire assessment that I wasn't really expecting to have. And actually, I'm generally really anxious. So imagine that we have, let's say, an anxiety subpersonality. If you've been practicing being anxious, and by practicing, I mean you have been anxious for a considerable period of time. Now, I say practicing because you might not think of it as practicing, but every time you're anxious, you're kind of strengthening the anxiety response, which in a principle is practice, right? Every time you have a panic attack, you're, you're strengthening the panic response which is in principle practice. So if you've practiced being in anxiety or if you, if you experienced anxiety for a long period of time, you have beliefs about your ability to cope with anxiety. You have beliefs about the origins of anxiety or panic or depression or stress. It doesn't matter. The subpersonality will focus, will coalesce around the dominant thoughts, experiences uh, and memories of that particular problem. So if you have an anxiety or a panic or a depression or a stress subpersonality, it will kick in in certain circumstances. Now, here's the thing. 
whenever a subpersonality kicks in, it thinks it's the only sub it thinks it's the only personality. Subpersonalities do not recognize other subpersonalities. Some subpersonalities are strong, dominant, like that's how you are most of the time, okay? And then there are there are kind of weaker ones that you don't see very often. But a subpersonality never recognizes another one's existence. So whichever subpersonality you're in, that's the only one there is. Imagine you kick into an anxiety subpersonality because you've been anxious for a while or depressed for a while. When that subpersonality kicks in in whatever context, often it's triggered, you would think, your subpersonality would think, well, this is me, I am anxious. And it'll have a much greater difficulty remembering times when it wasn't anxious and it will not accept that there are times when anxiety doesn't exist. So in principle, you will think of yourself as being anxious. I am anxious. I am depressed. I have panic. I am stressed. It's like, this is what it is. That's, that's it. And this is why it's important to use something like the Panic Pit Stop course. Because you've practiced being anxious, your anxiety subpersonality is, is let's say, reasonably, reasonably strong and reasonably present. And what you lack is what we might call a personal observer viewpoint, a POV. It's like a point of view, but a personal observer viewpoint. Now, recognize that when your anxiety subpersonality kicks in, it thinks it's the only personality there is. So that's basically what it is. I'm anxious. As you go through the Panic Pit Stop course, you recognize through practice and through just lots and lots of information and doing stuff or watching you know, videos, doing exercises, you develop a personal observer viewpoint, which means that when your anxiety personality kicks in, a bit of you goes, ah, my anxiety personality is kicked in. That's why I feel anxious. And that's very different from uh, I am anxious. That's it. I am anxious. Nothing I can do. Just got to suffer, struggle, you know, just endure it. With a personal observer viewpoint, ah, my anxiety subpersonality is kicked in. That's why I'm feeling anxious. Okay, let's switch to a different subpersonality. Let's switch to competent and clear. Let's switch to expert. Let's switch to actually, I'm really quite safe. Let's switch to something more fruitful, something more resourceful or useful. I like to think of subpersonalities as a deck of cards, but but not many cards, right? It's like let's say between four and nine playing cards and one of them is always on the top. You have more choice than you would think to select the one that's on the top. You might have one that is you know, uh, largely focused on, on love, on happiness, on calm, on tranquility, on peace, on good relationships, on good friends. That might be a subpersonality. That's the person you are when you're in a caring relationship or with, with good friends or you're feeling calm and relaxed, right? Why not have that card on the top? Why not have that subpersonality in play as opposed to the anxiety one. Unless you recognize that these subpersonalities can switch and unless you develop a personal observer viewpoint, which mindfulness is good for by the way, unless you develop a personal observer viewpoint, you don't really have any control over which subpersonality is in charge. So that's a critical step forward. Once you've got a personal observer viewpoint, you're 50% of the way there because now you can see the problem and once you can see a problem, it's just a matter of doing the steps, going through, let's say, the Panic Pit Stop course steps to resolve the problem. It's not being able to see the problem. It's imagining that the problem is you. I am the problem. The problem is me. I have anxiety. That's it. That's, that's the killer uh, situation because there's very little you can do with that because you've got no traction. You've got no viewpoint. You've got no options. I am anxious. Well, you can say that, but that's just your anxiety subpersonality kicking in because you're not always anxious and you're not always anxious to the same degree.